IP3 is a useful performance metric that provides an indication for the linearity of an RF circuit. It's mostly applicable for circuits operating in their linear small signal range, such as an LNA or mixer in a receiver. IP3 stands for third order intercept point, and it's one measure of describing the distortion when two relatively large equal level signals, close in frequency, are applied to the circuit. The circuit with the higher IP3 will produce lower third order distortion under the same test conditions. The graph shows the power in, power out transfer of a typical RF circuit. At low input levels, the circuit is essentially linear. A 1 dB increase in applied power giving a 1 dB increase at the output. As applied power increases, there comes a point where the circuit begins to run out of steam. It's no longer able to keep up the 1 dB in to 1 dB out increase. It's becoming non-linear and heading towards compression where it can no longer give any more increase in output power. One of the simpler ways to describe its non-linear behaviour mathematically is as a power law series. This works well for amplifiers in their linear region where distortion products are low. At very low input levels, the square, cubic and fourth order terms and so on are insignificant and the circuit is essentially linear with a gain B. As the input increases, contributions from these higher order terms starts to increase and then the circuit is operating increasingly non-linearly. The cubic term is often of most interest. Distortion caused by this term can generate interference products that are very close in frequency to the RF channel, something that is undesirable in RF systems. Measuring how these products vary with input level allows us to determine the thir circuit's third order intercept point, IP3, a figure of merit for third order distortion. IP3 is measured by applying two equal level unmodulated signals from two signal generators to the input of the circuit and observing the output level on a spectrum analyzer as the input levels are varied. The frequencies of the two signals are close together and often within the channel bandwidth of the system. The intermodulation of the input signals generate products on many different frequencies, some by the squared, some by the cubic, some by the quartic terms and so on. But of the cubic terms, third order products, those generated close to the input signals at 2F1 minus F2 and 2F2 minus F1 are problematic because they appear in nearby channels, can cause interference to users of these channels and once created are difficult to remove. A characteristic of these products is that, at low distortion levels, they increase by 3 dBs for every 1 dB increase in input signal power, as shown in this blue trace here. Extrapolating this to higher levels, there'll come a point where the output signals and the third order distortion product amplitudes intersect, and that's here. This intersection is known as the third order intercept point. Is a point that can't be measured directly because the circuit enters compression before this occurs. It can, however, be determined by extrapolation from measurements at lower levels. The third order intercept point can either be quoted at the output, in which case you get the output intercept point, uh, or OIP3, or it can be referred to the input, in which case you get the input referred third order intercept point, or IIP3. IP3 is usually given in units of power, for instance, dBm. We'll now go to the lab and show you the measurement. I'm going to measure the output IP3 of a microwave amplifier, IC. It's a low current, low noise gain block from CML's Surf RF range of ICs. This one runs from 23 gigahertz to 29 and a half gigahertz. It consumes 40 milliwatts, runs off a three to five volt supply. It's got an output IP3 of 15 dBm and a 1 dB output compression of 5 dBm. To measure the IP3 I'll be using these two signal generators, a combiner, an evaluation board with the amplifier on it and a spectrum analyzer and of course coax cable to connect everything together. 
I've connected the combiner to the two signal generators and I've connected the output of the combiner directly to the spectrum analyzer. I don't have the amplifier in the measurement yet because I first want to do a sanity check to make sure the signals are at the right level and that there's no distortion occurring in the measurement setup. I can see the two signals are at minus 33 dBm on the analyzer display and I can also see that there are no other spurious products on the screen. So we're good to go. I've now included the amplifier in the measurement and powered it off for 4 volt supply. I'll turn on the RF signals. You can see the two input signals are amplified to a high level but are also accompanied by third order distortion products here and here on either side. The markers on the input test signals show an output of minus 15 dBm whilst those on the distortion products are at minus 76 dBm giving us an IMR, the third order intermod ratio, of 61 dBs. With the distortion products so far below the test signals we can be confident the amplifier is operating in its linear range. To obtain the output IP3, we simply halve the output IMR, the intermod ratio, so 61 dBs becomes 30.5 dB, and add it to the level of the test signals at the output, the minus 15 dBm, to get an output IP3 of plus 15.5 dBm. So that's how to do the measurement manually. Some modern instruments can do this automatically for you, and this instrument can. Let's see what it comes up with. And it's showing the third order intercept of 15.6 dBm, which is pretty close to what we calculated manually. To complete the measurement, I should just check that these side distortion signals here and here are third order. If I increase the input signals by 1 dB, the distortion products should go up by 3 dB and the IP3 calculation should stay the same. So at the moment I've got minus 15 dBm out for the wanted signals and minus 76 of the products. If I go up 1 dB, the output is now minus 14 dBm and the products are 73. Go up another, it's minus 13 dBm and the products are 70. And another, minus 12 dBm and the products are 67. So the products are going up by 3 dBs for every 1 dB. So these are third order distortion products.